Let's go flying now and look at some frontal weather. We had best do this with the thought that dealing with the front involves a lot more than dealing with the lines drawn on a weather map. We have to think in terms of frontal zones, areas where the weather is influenced by the existence of a front. To begin, let's fly southbound through a warm front. One thing needs to be added here. Because all the properties of a warm front are not always present in the area east of a low, there won't always be a warm front shown there. However, you can bet that conditions in the area will be very similar to those found in a warm front. High clouds can extend hundreds of miles north of a warm front, and were we leaving, say, Hagerstown, Maryland, and flying south in the winter, the high clouds associated with a warm front in South Carolina would probably be north of Hagerstown. Flying southwest at, say, 10,000 feet, we'd fly into the clouds of an average warm front 200 miles north of the surface position of the front. This could initially be avoided by flying lower, but sooner or later, we will have to penetrate the clouds of that warm front. When we enter the clouds of the front, there will likely be some turbulence and rain. The rain might have actually started before the clouds were reached, depending on the altitude of our flight. Any bumps are wind shear turbulence, and they're usually not too bad. The wind below the slope of a warm front is likely out of the southeast. Above the slope, the wind is likely out of the southwest. If we enter the clouds at 10,000 feet, we know we'll have a couple of hundred miles of cloud flying to do before we're through with the front. Enter one of the prime considerations in warm frontal flying, the embedded thunderstorm. Before takeoff, on the area forecast, we should have gotten some idea of the expected possibility of embedded thunderstorms in the warm frontal zone. 